Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Thai court rules demands for reforms as attempts to overthrow monarchy. Tunisian Union calls strike to protest death of landfill protesters. Waste collection workers in Sheffield strike for better pay. And rights groups urge Egypt to halt Rabah protest death penalties. In our first story, Thailand's constitutional court has passed a sweeping order declaring pro-democracy protest and calls for reform as an attempt to overthrow the monarchy. The order was passed on November 10 as part of a trial of three youth activists charged with treason. The treason charges against Anon Nampa, Panupog Mike Jatnog and Panusaya Rung Sitijiravatanakul were related to a demonstration at the Thammasat University on August 10, 2020. Activists had called for reforms in the monarchy and the government. The court observed that the statements made by the three activists and other activities at the event had hidden intentions of overthrowing the monarchy and the government. The three activists were charged based on a complaint filed by a former advisor to the ombudsman and a vocal supporter of Prime Minister Prayal Chanocha. He was also involved in a previous petition against the erstwhile opposition group Future Forward Party, accusing them of sedition. The Constitutional Court acquitted the Future Forward Party in January last year. However, it then forcibly dissolved the party on charges relating to campaign funding weeks later. The court also has a history of dissolving democratically elected governments and political parties that challenge the military's control over the government. In Wednesday's ruling, the court ordered the three activists and other organizations and networks to stop activities to overthrow the regime. With no clarity on the organizations and the networks named, the ruling is expected to become another tool for the government to crack down on the protests. In our next story, a general strike was called in the Safaks region of Tunisia on November the 10th. It was organized by the General Trade Union, or UGTT, following the death of a protester in Agareb. The town has witnessed protests against a growing waste crisis over the past few weeks. The Safaks region's main garbage dump is located in Agareb and was shut down due to public pressure in September. Since then, city councils have refused to collect garbage, citing a lack of proper alternatives by the government. Household waste had started to pile up in the streets and even hospitals in Safax. Tunisia produces around 2.5 million tons of garbage every year, most of which is put in landfills. The people in Safax have warned of an environmental catastrophe due to the waste in the area. Thousands of people held protests last week stating that the government was killing them and violating their rights. On November 8, the Environmental Ministry reopened the Kenna landfill in Agareb in violation of a judicial order. Hundreds of people began protesting as waste was carried into the landfill. Police fired tear gas to disperse the crowds. A medic and a relative confirmed on Tuesday that 35-year-old Abdul Rasag Lacheheb had died due to tear gas inhalation. A hospital official stated that he had been brought in while suffering from asphyxia. UGTT declared a general strike and a day of mourning to protest what it called the intentional murder of a young man. It also called for permanent closure of the landfill and compensation for all its workers. Next, we go to the United Kingdom, where waste collection workers in the city of Sheffield have been striking for higher pay. Organized by the GMB union, workers have organized four-hour walkouts every Monday. GMB has been negotiating with the Veolia Waste Management Company. Its latest proposal included a 3% per year wage increase over a two-year contract. However, workers argued that the increase was below the current 5% rate of inflation and would actually amount to a pay cut. Workers have also accused Veolia of spending huge sums of money to hire out-of-town staff to break the strike. They have also raised concerns about changes to the terms and conditions of their contract. 
over a hundred striking workers held a protest outside Sheffield Town Hall on Monday. An all-out permanent strike has been scheduled for November 22nd unless Veolia presents a better pay offer. Meanwhile, workers in Glasgow, Scotland have also been striking for better working conditions and pay to address the cost of living crisis. The walkouts in Sheffield and Glasgow followed a two-week-long strike by waste collection lorry drivers in Brighton. Over 50 city clean refuse and recycling drivers organized by the GMP union walked out on October 5th. The main issues raised were related to last-minute changes to driver routes and pay. The strike ended after GMB reached a deal with the local council. This included pay rises not only for truck drivers but also for thousand lowest paid council workers. In our final stories, rights groups have renewed calls for the Egyptian government to halt death penalties against 26 men. They are among 739 people on mass trial for their participation in the sit-in at the Rabah al adawiyah Square in 2013. The protest was held against the military coup led by incumbent President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi against democratically elected President Mohamed Morsi. The sit-in was organized by the Muslim Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party. Egyptian forces proceeded to kill around 800 protesters. In 2018, a lower court handed death penalties to 75 people arrested during the protest. Another 47 were given life sentences. Most of the people sentenced to death belonged to the Muslim Brotherhood, which was labeled a terrorist organization by the coup regime. While some appeals are pending in the court of cassation, it upheld the death penalties of 26 men in June. With these people now at immediate risk of execution, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights has asked CC to halt the order. As reported by Middle East Eye, the Commission is investigating a complaint by former members of the Freedom and Justice Party. The complaint argues that Egypt violated several articles of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The Commission sent its letter on November 3rd and Egypt has 15 days to respond. There are currently over 60,000 political prisoners being held in Egyptian jails. The country has also witnessed a steady rise in executions under Sisi. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.